and welcome back to another video. We have the first box of 2022 here. It's January 2022. I don't know why I felt the need to repeat that. Um, if you do not know what a scroller box is, it is an art subscription box that costs £16.95 a month. It will be additional postage costs if you are outside of the UK. You receive lots of beautiful, fantastic art supplies as well as a wonderful featured artwork by a featured artist for this box and a scroller challenge which you use to create a piece of artwork based on that challenge with the supplies just in the box you also receive a lovely vinyl sticker which is the scroll box logo with the featured artwork within it and a lovely sweetie so that's always very nice and um, there is also a zine in these boxes that shows you a little bit more about the supplies a bit more about the featured artist and some hints and tips as to how to use the supplies which i do read when we do some swatching so let's get into this box it's a lot lighter than usual um, but i'm really excited it's come a lot earlier than usual as well i think they're hoping to get back on track with their delivery dates and times i know a lot of people have been a little bit put out by that but um, with covid with brexit all of that sort of stuff i think it's quite understandable that sometimes they might may not be able to reach the target dates Another thing to know is that every box that you purchase will also plant a tree. Okay, so let's put the supplies to one side. First off, we have the scroller zine, but I'm going to put that to one side until the end. We'll flick through and then I will read those hints and tips whilst we swatch, like I mentioned. Ooh, wonderful. So I like this colour scheme that we've got going on. Some lovely, warm, fiery colours. And this artwork is interesting. I really, really like this. Now, I can already sense that if this is some sort of character design challenge, I'm going to struggle because it's not my forte, but we will give it a go. So this is the featured artist. If you'd like to pause that there, you can have a little read. But they are from Birmingham, UK, so um, not too far from where I live. And they do a lot of character design like I <laughs> feared. But we will come to that when we come to it. Um, so the paper, is this coloured? Oh no, it's white paper, um, nice and thick, 250 GSM by Claire Fontaine, and it has a little bit of texture to it. So as this would suggest, we might be inking with maybe some brush pens in here. Okay, let's get into these supplies. So it feels like we have a box of supplies, which is always nice. I like that they've started doing that. Uh, um, including more boxes rather than just one or two pens which is always very nice let's take all of that out so like i mentioned this is the sticker so they went for a while they the design of the sticker was always the design on top on the, the zine and then suddenly they started making it the actual artwork which i liked um but now they seem to have gone back so i wonder why i wonder if it's just because that won't fit into the sticker very well as a design um our sweet is a tango cherry shocker i love a sour sweet uh sorry mum, if you hear this um, but i do love a sour sweet i can't help it um so that would be interesting to find out we have a pigma micron which is the staple of any inker and um, this is always the ink pen that you start off with it's always a lovely one but it's quite a thick one size 12 i don't think i've ever owned a size 12 ink pen before so that will be interesting we also have the staple pencil this is another faber castell we've received a couple of faber castells in the last few boxes so that's always handy to have i, I mean i don't feel like you can have as, uh, enough pencils but also i do feel like i have quite a lot from these boxes and then lastly is this pigment deco brush by Karen. I don't think I've ever heard of these before. I like the little box they come in. Oh, oh, these are interesting. Very interesting. Pigment deco brush. Okay, we're going to flip this over and have a little read. So these are pigment markers providing the ultimate creative freedom. They're flexible and versatile brush markers filled with rich acrylic paint. The opaque paint can be used in all kinds of materials such as paper, metal, glass, plastic, wood, textiles and lots more. Oh, OK. So it's a paint pen, so like a Posca, but with a soft um, brush nib. So very interesting. And I don't have to pump it or anything like that, which I must admit, it's not that hard of a task, but it is annoying, <laughs> annoying to do with the Uni Poscas. 
and we have a lovely range of warm colours. Now I get the colour theme of the whole box then um, and these will be interesting to try out. We will have a look at these when I start swatching and like I say I will read some hints and tips of from um, about them rather. Okay so that's good and then our scroller challenge is creature comfort okay so it's not a character design per se um this might lend itself well to me doing some sort of animal artwork and we have a liner so i can do some inking on top of colors that could be very do doable within my style um but yeah that's cool right let's finish off with this scroller zine and then we'll get into swatching and i'll stop waffling about things so this is the contents again um a little bit more in depth and i always like the layout of this page it's beautiful we have then some information more uh, about the artist a little bit more um which i won't let you i mean i don't know if you can pause that and read it go ahead but i don't know if the quality of the video will allow you to do that then we have some artist advice and things to try that's a lot to say so i'm sure we will have a full voiceover of this video then we have creating calm and guess who's at the bottom here I've been featured, which is amazing. I always love being featured in these zines. It's always something to keep hold of um, for the future. So I'm really pleased about that. Some lovely artwork on here. This, these moths are stunning. And this. In fact, all of it. There's some really lovely stuff on there. How wonderful. Huh, cool. Um, and then a little bit extra. They always have a scroller extra at the back, which is usually um, kind of linked to the scroller challenge. Um, so this is about the art of capturing character, which is another interesting one. And like I say, if you would like to or can pause and have a read, do go ahead. So that is that for this box. I'm excited. It's nice that it's not strictly character design and I can kind of put my own um, style on that of doing inking animals and things like that, which is good. Um, and we'll see where this takes me. And like I say, whilst we swatch and do a bit of the art, I will read those scroller hints and tips on the supplies. So... Let's get cracking. So I'm going to read just from the things to try. There is a little segment um, called artist advice, but I feel like it is just a bit of a conversation. Um, so I'm not going to read that. I'm just going to read the things to try. So the first thing they say is before use, make sure you shake well with the caps on. If you find this, the ink still isn't truly opaque, give them another shake just before use to make sure the paint has truly been fully activated. I found that the ink was actually really opaque straight out of the barrel. I may have been lucky, some people may have them a bit drier, um, but I didn't feel like that was too much of an issue for me personally. It says, store your pens horizontally if possible. These pens will need to be stored with the tips slightly inclined downwards. This will protect the tips from drying out. If you need to clean the tips, briefly dip the tip into clean water, then paint with it on a sheet of clean paper until the paint flows normally again. Repeat these steps if necessary. I actually dipped my tip in water just to test out what would happen and the, the ink actually dried up after a little bit and I was a bit worried that I damaged my paint a pen and I'm actually really glad to read that tip because um, obviously I know now that that's something you can do to clean them. Um, these pens are super pigmented, they're super versatile and can be used on lots of different surfaces, not just paper. You can try them out on metal, glass, plastic, wood, textiles and more. They are also great for use on dark surfaces. Important to note, the brush tip can be prone to fraying if it is used on rough surfaces, so they are best used on smooth surfaces or paper like the pad provided. These pens blend beautifully together to create a gradient slash blend. Apply your first colour and let it set briefly, don't let it dry completely, then paint your second colour next to it and bring the paint into the area you would like to create the transition. Carefully mix these colour pigments using the first colour pen, running the front 2 to 3 millimetre of the brush o tip over the second colour. That was very technical, um, but all in all you can blend them, um, I think like you'd blend any sort of paint or pen together I think they they do very well as you saw in my swatching I did blend and they they do beautifully blend to be honest um get creative you can mix these pens together to make new colors and play around with tones all you need is a palette and a brush Karin pigment deco brush pens are permanent when dry so you can use the micron fineliner to top on top of them and it won't disturb the color beneath 
The Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencil provides a light graphite to the page. This means that any line work underneath should be covered by the opacity of the Karin markers and the fine liner. Okay, so a few things to know when I was swatching. If you add too much of the pen, especially when I was blending the two colours together, it did eat the paper up a little bit. And as you can see, whilst I'm painting this tiger now, I did eat the paper. And that's probably because I'm not using watercolour paper and I'm applying a lot of water. But equally, just using the pen straight from the barrel, if you put too much of it on, on the same place, it does eat pull that paper apart and it's not very good so just be aware of that if you are using these supplies i also saw that the deco pens the paint pens over the pigment liner did smudge the liner i let that liner dry for quite a while and the liner did smudge so if you are going to do anything don't put the liner down first especially if you're using the light yellow color it will smudge it and that's not very good another tip that i would say when using these is you can actually apply one pen to the other with the tips of them um, and then use it almost like those chameleon markers where you have one colour blending into another after a little while and that actually works really well so if you are doing some sort of shadowing or something like that doing it that way may be quite a good um, technique to use um, but all in all the pens were good and I will let you watch the rest of the artwork and see my thoughts of the artwork at the end.
we have it, the final piece. I really actually like this. When I first started, I was very, very worried that this was going to be these one one of these ones where I, I created it and at the end I just really disliked it, wouldn't want to post it, wouldn't want to show it. But do you know what? Actually, I really, really like it. And I did cheat a little bit if you class it as cheating and I did bring in a paintbrush. This is actually the paintbrush from the last scroller box or the scroller box before it. So it is scroller box a scroll box supply it just is a couple of months old um but i did cheat and i did use these pens as watercolors because as you know from if you've been watching my channel for a while or following my art on instagram using block colors is just not my forte i don't really do that i find it very hard to do that and I mean, I think I probably could have achieved this look by just applying these and blending it similar to how I've done here and how the featured artist has done on their jumper. However, I didn't want quite a bold colour. I actually don't. I think they on that jumper have done that with a paintbrush because that colour is not as bold as it would usually be if they'd done it with the brush straight off. Um, and I wanted that watercolour look. So, yes, I did cheat a little bit. I don't know if people will find that blasphemous but i did cheat and that i'm just gonna accept that <laughs> because i've actually created a piece of artwork that i like instead of something that i dislike so i'm fine with that um when i was looking at the colors i thought kind of what 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 subject lends itself well to these colors and i immediately thought a tiger or a a, a, a wild cat like a lion or something like that they, they all have this very warm color palette um and then my mum actually suggested doing a cat laid in front of a fireplace which I did kind of think about I did try and sketch out some ideas however what I found difficult with with that is finding the contrast be between the fire and the cat as a subject I just didn't really know what would be best for that what would look the best and how i would manage to uh, capture that with these supplies um so i kind of thought let's stick with just one thing one subject being these colors and that's i obviously had to do the tiger because that is the the creature um and then i thought a white bath i could utilize the white paper keep it white with just the glow of the the tiger laying in there shining off the surface of the bath and then likewise with these candles they would create a nice warm glow around these rim so the edge lighting there which i really enjoyed playing with and then to use that that brown i did add some um grounding to it just so it didn't look like it was floating i had my mum in the back of my mind telling me to do that she's been telling me to do that since i ever i first ever started doing art was always make sure you ground things um so i did have her in the back of my mind telling me to do that um and yeah, I, I like it. The only thing I did struggle with was the liner because I chose not to do a character, like a character design like the featured artist. I found I didn't really want to do thick lines. Um, obviously, the tiger stripes were black and thick, so that's great. But doing the edging on the bath and everything, I didn't want it to look like a solid line. So I did breaks in the line trying to keep it as thin as possible and i did find that difficult because it was such a big liner but i could have i mean if i was going to break the rules more i could have swapped it out for a different pigma micron liner that was a bit thinner that i have in my supplies um but keeping to using just the supplies as much as possible i did continue with it and, and i mean it works fine and um i feel like what i've done is fine and i i mean there's things I would change, things I would do differently, but that's the way a scroller box goes. It's there to test you. It's there to make you try new supplies, but also try out different art styles and things like that. And I, I think this is this is nice. I'm really pleased with it. Um, and yeah, the box has been very nice. And and you know what? I hate to say it, but I think I prefer these to uni poskas. And we're going to end on that mic drop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>